Hello friends, I hope you guys are doing well. I wanted to make a proper intro video to this A Day With Me, but I'm going to kind of run the most important errands first, and then when I get home, kind of closer to the end of today's adventures, I'm going to explain to you guys how everything started and just kind of give you guys a little update. But long story short, so a couple of days ago, I had to get um, an iron infusion and a blood transfusion. So yeah, I had to actually get blood from somebody else, which is kind of weird. I, I felt pretty icky to be honest, because I've never had to do anything like that before. And I'm pretty anemic, which means I lack um, iron in my blood, like severely. And also, oh, here's Boy Boy. And also I um, lack hemoglobin. So because of that, I had to get an iron transfusion and a iron infusion and a blood transfusion i always get that wrong but yeah and today i have to go back to the hospital to do um another iron infusion and another one in two weeks so this is gonna be my second iron infusion and um yeah that's that's why i'm running around today i'm a little bit behind i wanted to do a bit of a makeup because i do want to run my errands afterwards I'm always working, I have to send an Etsy order, I have to go do some grocery shopping, do a little bit of house shopping today as well, but um, yeah, but the iron infusion takes about three hours, so I wanted to do a little a day with me video and at the end of it or when I get back home I'll give you guys a bit of an update and tell you how my adventure is. That was Lucifer jumping from the ground the table which is crazy but yeah we're just gonna it's okay she can she can walk it's fine but uh so yeah so i'm going to go for the iron infusion it takes about three hours and i took my ipad with me and yeah when i come home i'll let you guys know how everything went um and i will let you guys know what happened on wednesday that caused me to go to the hospital on thursday and get all of this shit started so yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna go get dressed and um, get going. I'm a little bit late. I'm slightly running behind, but so yeah, I will be. I will. <laughs> Lucifer, hi. Hi, Stinky. Hi, Stinky. She's so sweet. But yeah, that's about it, you guys. I will go. Oh, oh, oh. I will go get dressed. Okay, bye. <laughs> go grab some coffee and go back home to pick up the Etsy package I have to send I completely forgot to pick it up so I'm gonna go do that I feel okay just very right. migrainey and nauseous I'll be right back hello so I'm back home I couldn't find a single quiet place to sit down and record a little uh, video for you guys I really wanted to do this outside because then I wouldn't be stuck home but I just it was so loud everywhere so the whole process of the infusion took about three hours and it was good. The only thing I was feeling during it was a little bit of migraines, um, a little bit of nausea, but no vomiting. Um, and what else? My arm was freezing cold. Um, I felt a bit cold generally um, and just tired overall. I've, I've been really exhausted since I went to uh, the Emerge for my issue. So I wanted to kind of sit down and like let you guys know what happened um, and kind of like when this whole thing started uh i've always been really anemic like ever since i was a teenager i was always pretty anemic my uh, iron results would always come back a little bit lower than usual i remember since i was like 17 16 um and as i got older it actually got a little bit worse so yeah the last um year or so the results have been critically low and we don't really know exactly why 
I was basically told to take um, really strong iron supplements daily and I did that and in the three months or more that I've been taking them my results have not changed at all it's as if I'm not taking them at all and a lot of people are saying like oh you know you should eat meat or like uh, this is because of your diet. I'm not on any diets. Like I'm, I'm not a vegan. I would love to be a vegan, but with my current health issues, I'm still already struggling to figure out what's wrong. Let alone like on top of that, limit my diet or like put my mind in that sense. I know a lot of people are gonna say like, oh, you know, there's always a way. There's always, but I think in my case, like. I'm not there yet, like I don't even know what to do with my diet, let alone become vegan. But yeah, so in the last year or so, the results have been critically low. Both my hemoglobin and my iron are extremely low to the point where it was, it was bad, like it was really, really low. I've never seen it that way. My mom has kind of a similar issue as me, but even her results have never been that bad. And um, we did a bunch of tests. I wasn't having any internal bleeding. Um, I, not nothing seems to be abnormal. We've done a bunch of tests. We've done some CTs. There's an ultrasound scheduled for some time, I think next week, or is it this week? I don't know, I'll check. But uh, nothing came back weird. Like there's no abnormal bleeding anywhere. Like it's, it's not, I'm not really losing blood anywhere. I just don't have any, my body just doesn't make any healthy blood cells, red cells. Um, and I don't have iron in my blood at all. Like zero um almost zero it was three my ferritin was three so i don't know if you guys are familiar with results but three is really bad <laughs> it's like it's really bad and how i was feeling for a year it really makes sense um i've been extremely exhausted for no reason sleeping many many hours waking up really exhausted i've even made like a joke tiktok about it getting up like everything turns black it's just yeah, everything turns black. If you've been there, you know exactly how it feels. Your head feels light. So in near, um, like last week or so, when it got really bad, closer to that time, I had to like plan out how to get up. Like I, if I'm getting up from the ground like this, I would have to get up in two parts. I would have to sit on the couch and then get up. And, you know, overall I was exhausted. I was getting really short of breath. Um, on Wednesday, we decided to do um, a spontaneous photo shoot with my dear friend Anisha and I'm very excited to edit those pictures and it was really fun like we we didn't do a lot but we were doing a little bit of walking like we we recorded um, some slow motion videos and the dresses we were wearing was just magical and we wanted to capture some slow-mo and so there was just a lot of walking just walking back and forth to record this little shot and at the time I didn't really say anything because I didn't want to make it worse on myself and like panic but i was getting really short of breath for no reason and you guys know like i'm used to belly dancing for 10 minutes to heavy metal like it's that kind of stuff should not make me winded like i'm usually pretty active but this was really abnormal i was getting short of breath and then i was feeling chest tightness and it just feels like someone's sitting on your chest like you can't really breathe there is no room to breathe in like it's it's just such a weird feeling you guys know i had covid back in march i believe and i did not feel anything like this even back then so thankfully when we got covid it didn't really affect us that way but if anything i was expecting to feel this kind of stuff back then and i did not so i'm assuming that it was my anemia because nothing else is wrong as far as i'm aware um but yeah so my body wasn't getting enough oxygen and that night we uh, i got invited to go see a movie called the night house that is not in theaters yet i got invited to go see it first and you know that's a whole thing i'm going to talk more about that but uh, on our way there we grabbed an uber with sal and in the when we were getting close to it i wasn't walking like i was sitting for the last 10 minutes or so and i was feeling chest tightness and shortness of breath and it's like I'm sitting down like this is this is just stupid so I went home I should have probably gone to an emergency right there but I just I, could, I didn't feel like it was heart related you know what I mean I didn't feel like it was my heart having any issues I, I know that my 
um, iron's been really low I know that I'm like severely anemic and I haven't even been working as much as before like it's that bad to the point where it's actually affecting me at work even when it comes to like my photo shoots and stuff they haven't been the same as usual like I haven't been able to do as much as before we usually take our time spend a couple of hours I come home I just sit down and I edit for hours and it's been quick like we've been just doing it in like half an hour 20 minutes kind of as much as I can handle and then I just come home and I sleep like it's been pretty bad um, and so I just knew that it wasn't like a heart issue so I decided to wait and then go to um, and emerge the next day so that night I fell asleep uh, in the morning Sal took me to the hospital that I work at so everybody was familiar I felt really safe there because I'm, I already know everybody from the people that take my blood to the nurses that work there like I'm familiar with everyone so it wasn't as scary as it would be but I just explained my symptoms I said that I and the funny thing is the morning that I went it started again like the fact that I just walked from the car the parking to the door of our emerge that was enough to get it started so good thing that i was there and then i just explained my symptoms they did a blood test on me checked my ferritin and hemoglobin and while they were waiting for the results the doctor said like something in the lines of you know we don't do iron infusions here um we'll see your results but that's something that you'll have to schedule with your family doctor and i was like okay well i like this is affecting my life like this i i can't even function anymore like i feel like my body is just giving up on me like that's really what it felt like and it's this is so stupid to say but when the doctor left i just closed the curtain and i just had a proper quiet cry i was so overwhelmed and i was so exhausted because um i've been waiting for a long time to see an internal medicine specialist in regards to this and apparently only the internal medicine specialist can refer me to get iron infusions and we know that there's nothing else going on. We know that this is not a heart issue. This is not a breathing problem. This is this is my iron. I, I don't have any iron at all. And um, and then, so yeah, I had a little quiet cry by myself. I panic texted Sal saying like, they're telling me that there's nothing they can do. And Sal was like, just just wait and just, just see how it goes. And I just wait for a few hours. Um, it's getting really busy at the time. I think I waited for like maybe another hour and a half for all the results to come back. And the doctor said, okay, so your results are worse than they were before the last time you got it checked, which was already critical. It's worse now. Um, not only will we make an exception to do an iron infusion for you here, but we will also have to give you a unit of blood if you're okay with that. And um, I said I was okay with that. She said, you will feel better. I kind of hesitated because I've never had a blood transfusion. I thought that that's just in really, really, really critical cases, like if you're bleeding out. And she said, you know, with all of the um, symptoms that you're talking about, this will make you feel better. So yeah, I hesitated a little bit because I just, I've never, I never thought that I would have to get a blood transfusion and that I would get to the place where that would make me feel better. Um, I thought that my only issue would be solved with iron alone and um but no the doctor said that hi lucy the doctor said that you will feel a lot better and i i trust her and so i said yes i got the blood transfusion as well and i was there for i think a total of like 10 11 hours if i'm not mistaken um but it kind of went by fast uh, i i had my um my co-workers were coming and checking on me every hour uh there were a lot of just like it was just such a lovely traumatizing but lovely experience i was feeling like absolute hell and just uh having to like uh kind of come in terms with the fact that okay i'm gonna get a blood transfusion today something that i've never thought about like i never thought that it would get that bad so i felt pretty icky to be honest like i felt pretty like this is stupid but i feel pretty grossed out like just to see blood going straight into my veins it was just like kind of gross um but i didn't feel bad at all like it felt totally normal it was all a little bit weird but you know the nice thing is it was a very familiar place that's that's where i work that's where i'm always walking up and down and um i had my co-workers there constantly checking on me they're absolutely wonderful people and it was nice it was familiar faces and um since i went to an emerge uh basically i 
was assigned to the internal medicine doctor there who's a wonderful doctor i actually know of him and i've heard only great things about him and he immediately got a bunch of tests going i already had my second infusion today so my my third infusion will be in two weeks so this one we're gonna just let it do its thing everything kind of hurts a little bit I've, and i've read that it's totally normal that you can have some joint pain or what feels like muscle joint pain um you can have you can have migraines with it and you can have a kind of like a metallic taste in your mouth and i'm having pretty much all of these and the metallic taste is mostly as the infusion's happening you know right now i don't really taste anything other than my coffee i've mentioned this before as well since i had COVID to now my sense of taste and smell has not yet returned 100 percent. maybe like 70 percent there sometimes it gets worse sometimes like i would honestly say it's about 50 percent there um to this day there my i'm like the perfumes that i spray on myself perfumes that i've sprayed for years and years and i i know that smell by heart do, they don't smell that way anymore they smell burnt um coffee still smells kind of gross it kind of smells like leftover onions like onions you would throw out and like there's a really weird smell with um with coffee especially right before you like when it's just grounded like i used to love the smell of ground coffee i would just smell it now it just, it just smells gross it smells terrible and but i still drink it because i need it but yeah so don't get COVID. it's horrible um it is bad as it is but the i think the worst thing that it did to me was taking away my sense of taste and smell because i was told that I have one of the best sense of smell ever. Like I could smell things from a mile away. Like I have such a good sense, I had such a good sense of smell. I could smell like, this is kind of gross, but I would be in the shower with the water on with like very perfumed um, shampoo and stuff on my head. And I would be able to smell if like Luna or Lucy pooped in their sand outside a closed door far away from the bathroom like and it doesn't even smell that bad but i'm able to like i'm really good at smelling i smell really well like their poop doesn't even smell that bad but i just i'm able to smell it really well um but yeah and like i used to work in this aromatherapy shop as well and people would come to me with like blends that they had and i would be able to just match it exactly as they needed because like we would mix like shit for them and they would they would bring their stuff back and would mix it again for them um and now yeah it's it's not there like sal wears this perfume that every time she used to wear i used to love it i used to always like comment on it and say oh my god like you're wearing that again i have so many memories with it and like the past couple of months she'll wear it here and there and like after a few hours she'll be like you couldn't smell it and I'm like no we smell what like what are you talking about and um one time i was able to smell it a little bit on her but i didn't even know what it was like i, I couldn't tell that that the nice thing that i was smelling was that perfume so it's it's kind of sad because it's been months um i've already had my second dose i don't feel any other side effects or any other symptoms from my COVID experience but just the fact that I can't taste or smell as much as I used to really bothers me sometimes, especially when during the day there are times where my sense of taste and smell is even duller than usual and I hate it when that happens. I get kind of frustrated because I want to taste things, you know, if I can't taste something then it just becomes texture and that, that's disgusting, that's gross. But yeah, I would say that's probably the worst thing from COVID in, in, in my experience personally. But other than that, um, I feel okay. I just, my arm hurts so much. Um, I have this beautiful, br oh, it's getting better. Wow. Well, it's looking worse, but I have this lovely bruise from uh, Thursday uh, when I was in urgent care. They were, I had um, the iron going here, the blood going here. And then before the blood started here, they tried down here and there was no good vein. I have pretty good veins up here. They're just a little bit hidden though. They're a little bit hidden. And today too, unfortunately, my first, um, the first poke I got for the IV blew out. So it, it really, really hurts right now. And I'm with all this anemia and being poked all the time. I feel like right now I'm more sensitive to pain than usual. I usually don't care about these things, but like, since I went to the Emerge, I'm just like holding my arms and I'm just like, I feel like such a hurt baby right now. But other than that, I feel okay. My energy is a little bit better. 
Yeah, the internal medicine doctor that was assigned to me, basically we had a good conversation about anemia and how it's actually a big issue around the world. It's not as small of a deal as people make it. Um, I don't know if you can die from anemia. I guess with complications from anemia, you could probably die, but it's, I don't think people realize what a big issue it is and how much it can affect your life. For the last year or so, I feel like I have not been myself at all. And I did mention this many times since this happened. I've, I've, and every time I mentioned this to um, like any of the nurses or the doctor, they would be like, I, we know exactly what you mean. Like anyone who gets to your point says the same thing. You just don't feel like yourself. Like you know yourself, you know that this is not your energy level. You know that you shouldn't get winded for these things, you know? maybe later in my life but not not in when i'm 29 you know and um what has made it worse i'm not 100 percent sure to be honest like i don't know maybe my body just like gave up on me a little bit but it has gotten a lot worse in the last year and um i'm gonna be more careful with it um i'm gonna be i mean there's not much i can do people are telling me to like eat steak and stuff and i do eat everything i don't like steak i don't like p big slabs of meat i i don't i, I don't like to be fair, I actually, I don't like eating meat that much. I do love burgers, I do love wings, but I will try to be more careful with my health, but this isn't something that I can avoid. Um, I've been taking iron supplements, I've been eating pretty much anything that comes at me. Like I'm, I don't not eat anything, I eat whatever I like to eat. Um, and my, my results have not changed. And I think you can get more iron from the supplements that I was taking orally than you can get from a big slab of steak like i just keep hearing people say if another person tells me to eat steak i'm gonna yell because everyone is like oh you should eat steak you should eat steak i don't want to eat steak steaks are gross i don't mind meats because there's more iron in the supplement that i'm taking and if my body can't even absorb that like obviously it's not going to absorb the iron in the steak. From what I'm understanding, this should not be a long-term thing. Um, this should be like, I should be okay with this, unless something else happens, God forbid, like I'm knocking on wood, like nothing bad happens. But um, I think beyond the next iron infusion, I shouldn't have to do anything else. Like I, I should not need blood anymore. I should not need iron um, intravenously anymore. I should be able to balance myself out. Hopefully, we'll see, but I I haven't been told anything else. There's a, still a couple of tests that I've been um, scheduled to do just to make sure it's not other things, make sure that it has nothing to do with like how much I'm bleeding every month. It has nothing to do with like a stomach issue. Um, they've already checked, it's kind of gross, but they checked my poop to make sure I don't have any blood in it and I didn't. So there, I still have to go back for a couple of other tests, but from, from personal experience of seeing how my body is working, nothing else seems to be out of place other than just no iron exists within this body. Well, now it does, but yeah. But still, you know, it's good to get everything else checked because you never know. It could be something that you never even thought about. Knock on wood, it isn't, but it's good to check. So um, if you are a woman, do get your, um, ferritin checked, uh, do get your hemoglobin checked, make sure that you're not anemic because it's really crap and apparently a lot of women are anemic, even a little bit anemic. It doesn't mean you have to go get iron infusions, a lot of it will resolve itself by taking supplements. So definitely if you feel fatigue and especially if you have heavier menstrual cycles, definitely look into that, ask your family physician if you can do uh, like a general blood tests including CBCD, complete blood count, and a ferritin just to see, just to see where you're at because it could always be anemia, a little something, get it checked. But yeah, that's about it. That's been my uh, journey for the last year or so, but specifically the last couple of days. But uh, other than that, it's, it's good. It's going up from here and I'm really excited because with the lack of energy I've been having for the last year, I could I could not imagine renting the studio and dancing. And that was the, the main reason why I didn't because I didn't want to disappoint myself. I knew that I wasn't physically where I want to be in order to dance. And I knew that if I were to watch myself barely finish a song, I'm going to feel like shit and I'm just not going to play with those videos. And I'm just going to hate everything because there was a time actually 
couple of months ago, I remember my mom and I, we went to the forest and I was like, let's record a video. I got everything ready. We went in the morning and we tried to record a video. I could not get through a single fucking video, but I can't wait to feel better. I really can't wait to start feeling more like myself again because I've just been feeling like absolute crap. If I can't walk up a flight of stairs or walk quickly during a photo shoot over and over again to record a slow-mo video, I don't really think I would have had the energy to record any belly dance videos or anything. And I didn't rent the studio because one, it is expensive to rent it for a few hours and I did not want to disappoint myself. I didn't want to rent the studio when I'm pretty much sick and I'm not able to physically do anything without being out of breath so i'm really looking forward to feeling better again and to just kind of gaining the energy that i've always had and um and going back to the studio and making more dance videos kind of doing doing what i consider to be my first love when it comes to arts you know i love doing all of these fantasy photo shoots and working with these amazing designers and shops and my mom who is my favorite photographer, I love editing these pictures. I absolutely love recording videos and just sharing these things with you guys. But my first love is belly dance. That is my first love, like that's my that's my baby. And yeah, heavy metal belly dancing, I would say is my my main happiness. That's that's where I get my, my, my main inspiration from. I mean, I do love the other things that I do. I, I love every aspect of everything else that I do, but I, it's a whole different thing. Belly dancing is a whole different thing for me. It feels like doing something that I was supposed to be doing. Like, I don't know. It just feels like the most natural thing that I should be doing. And I can't wait to go back to it. And yeah, that's about it. Um, what else did I want to say? I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, much love to you guys. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.